Bless. All right, guys, here we are. We're back, and uh, we're sitting down with Sylvain Sylvain of the New York Dolls. Um, it's not our first time we've met. We have a little bit of history. Uh, Buffalo. Buffalo. We'll always we'll always have Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> and, uh, now, last time we talked was in 2008, and you were in support of the uh, One Day Will Please Us to Remember Even This. Yes. Um, Which is the world's longest fucking well, title yeah, that yeah, I've ever heard. <laughs> I tried to convince the guy that wrote that to not to do that. He never listens to me. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any. I don't think he listens things. to anybody, does he? <laughs> yeah, he was, I know who he listens to, but I won't mention that okay. either. Okay. <laughs> now, since then, you guys have released uh, yes. four more albums. How things been going, man? And four more albums, about 359. No, no. Actually, uh, since then, we, we, we've done two more. So it's well, three, three the, the live ones, too. Oh, right? the live ones. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. I think I sold like three of them. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> well, we probably sold that one to me tonight. And, so. and we're all free on the internet, you know, so whatever. But, um, well, you know, things are good, you know, and, and things went the way they went. Because there, there was only one guy that was choosing the way it was gonna go, <laughs> and uh, but that's all right. You know, I think we could have done a lot better, and, and I think we could have delivered more New York Dolls. You know, the old traditional name that it is, right. instead of trying to, you know, nouveau la compagnie, as we say in French, and uh, it, it didn't need to be fixed. So you know, it wasn't broken, kind of a deal. You know exactly. What I mean? So, but that's all right. That's you know, okay. you know, uh, it was great music, just the wrong title. Right. You see, it was. I mean, I don't mean the title of the album. Right. It was great music. I have no no troubles with the music. Great writing, everything all around. The only thing is, I think instead of being called New York Dolls, it should have been called the David Johansson Group. But that's my own opinion. Okay. Now, uh, I want to ask you guys about the tour with Motley Crue and Poison. How was that? Oh, it was the biggest fucking disaster I ever fucking been on. Really? Yes. You know, know. And I love those bands. Right. But the New York Dolls fans, which we were opening up, by the way. Yeah, which I, my next question is actually about that. Uh, if you found it weird to be opening a ba opening up for two bands that essentially you know ripped off their entire image from the New York Dolls, I mean, Lock, Stock, Barrel. Yeah, but they sold records. <laughs> we yeah, have sold image. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's you don't get paid. You know, once I tried to, to uh, I went to the bank because I was broke. I was hurting, as the as y'all would say up here. Yeah, Georgia. <laughs> we in Georgia. <laughs> Uh, and, and I try to deposit, you know, like, like just, you know, maybe, you know, a couple million dollars in the bank. And, and, and from what I said, influence. And the, the guy almost shot me. So you see, the banks don't, they, they don't, you don't get paid for influence. But, That's right. But then again, no, I mean, to really, to put it, you know, in a, in a, in a good way, it was the opportunity of a lifetime in some ways for us. And it was a disaster of a lifetime and the other side of the coin, you know. Right. And the reason why is because we were just opening up and then people were f just beginning to file in. It was, we played, 90% of those shows was for an empty house, basically. So that's and we could have been shit. doing our own venues. Yeah. And, and we could have had even more people and, and done more of a, you know, I'm into events. You know, I, I don't want to just play to make money because I've made so much money in this business. <laughs> yeah, I know. That I don't want to play. I, I made so much money, had to be a cab driver for a few years. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I hear you, man. Did you know something with, between me and and Glenn? He he did that too, like as a, a mini driver in England. Oh really? Yeah, when things I got didn't tough know for him too. So you see, we're both in the same thing, and you know, but it's it's cool. You know, that's how life goes. It comes around. And but just to get both back, in bands that were huge influences to millions of people that. You guys didn't get any money for it, you know. And that, uh, well, he told me last night he, he did get something. Oh, did he finally <laughs> get something? Good. good, good for him, <laughs> man. <laughs> now, uh, we're going to fast forward here to 2013. You're now on this Acoustic Anarchy Tour with Glenn Matlock. Uh, now, Tommy Ramon was supposed to be on this. Oh, by the way, you know what we're dubbing this, the name of this uh, tour? No. It's called the Sex Dolls. Oh, the Sex Dolls Tour. That's even better. You and see, I'm pretty you, sure quite a few of our viewers can relate. Wink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So how did it how did it come about that uh, you ended up taking uh, Tommy's place? Did they just call well, you up, or did you happen to say, "Hey, I'm Unfortunately, 
Of course, he got sick, poor Tommy. And God yeah. bless him. He's such a sweetheart. Yeah, we're, all, really, we're all praying, we're all pulling for you. Yeah, man. yeah. And, and uh, we dedicate basically our show to him. And, um, you know, uh, he, of course, he was supposed to be on this to, to start off you know, to right. the whole thing. And uh, the poor guy did get sick. The uh, Our agent that booked this whole thing uh, off the menu, this guy named Richard, who I've worked with in the past, because he used to book me and Sammy Alpha to do DJs and stuff like that, all, all around the world. Almost. And um, so when poor Tommy fell ill, they called me up, and, and me and Glenn have been trying to like basically do something together for ages now, you know, and we've done some things, but in separate bands, you know, right, right. but then not the, on, together, and, and the way this show goes, is I, I open up the evening, and I do my, my little teenage loses, you know, pills, and things like that, and uh, then he comes on, and he plays, you know, uh, um, a pretty vacant, and all his little, you know, his, yeah. his beautiful stuff, He's a great writer, by the way. He's, he's so under, underestimated in, in his show, too. And uh, and then at the end of the night, we both get together and, and we do a bunch of stuff that was just kind of, you know, off the hook. Awesome. Uh, that's one of my questions, because uh, I was going to ask I, you. I knew that. Well, uh, I one of the things... <laughs> I know, it's like a read the Dr. See, Seuss see, book. <laughs> see, this is, this is the Buffalo Connection. We the have. Buffalo Connection. But, uh, and by the way, I'm sorry we didn't play Buffalo. We should have. But next time. No, you're in my hometown now. I didn't have to go anywhere this time. Oh, really? Oh, so when you came to Buffalo, we, that we wasn't drove. Yeah, we drove out there. That oh. was a vicious snowstorm, man. It vicious. Us, Longest us, ride home from Buffalo ever. It took us like almost three <laughs> hours to come from Buffalo to Rochester. Did you know that Buffalo was my first American city that I lived here? Yeah, I knew that, actually. I think we discussed that when we talked yeah, to Buffalo yeah. before. And I, was, I was born in Cairo, Egypt. So... My poor mother, when we moved to Buffalo, we had never seen snow. Yeah, before. right. Coming from Egypt, we had like little British yeah, English shoes, you know, like for little brown shoes, and 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 it started to snow like from from October to the next October, you know. So, anyways. Now, uh, one of the things since we last spoke, uh, your friend and former New York Dolls and Sex Pistols manager Malcolm McLaren passed away. Oh yeah, poor now, guy. What were your feelings on that? I love the guy, you know, because. I actually met Malcolm way before the Dolls, you know, in a way, because uh, he was in the clothing business and I was in the clothing business, and we met at a trade show in New York. Yep. And uh, I was, uh, I had my company with Billy Garcia, and uh, it was called Truth and Soul. Truth and Soul, we, we were a knitwear company, sweaters and stuff like that, you know. And, um, and one day when I was at, at at the McAlpin Hotel, because back then they didn't have convention centers, you know? right. so they held trade shows in hotels, you know, and they would take a few floors and everybody would rent their room and yeah. put up their little signs and stuff. And I saw this guy, man, at the end of the at the end of the hallway, really cool looking guy, man. He looked like uh, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, you know, yeah. with a baby blue jack long jacket <laughs> down here with black collar and everything and. Winkle Pickers and all like this kind of total, stuff. Total Teddy Boy look. Teddy Boy, yeah. yeah. We, we, you know, we call them here uh, the Rockabillies, but over there yeah. it's Teddy Boys, of course. And I said, man, you're cool, man. He says, come on in and see my shop, mate. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and who was inside, too, was Vivian Westwood. Yep. And so, and, and the name of the place... Uh, it was called Let It Rock. This is before Sex Four Originals sex and, all and all that stuff. We actually got to go there. Really? It's, 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 well, it's now World's End. It's well, still Vivian's yeah, shop. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I got to go there and, and go. I, I went to England and I, I pretty much spent uh, an entire two days of my trip there just basically walking in the footsteps of the pistols. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. pretty amazing. Actually. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Actually, Glenn used to work at, for Let It Rock. Yeah. You know, and, yep. So this is, it's a, like I said, man, it's a big circle, this life thing of ours. Now, I know at one point, uh, Malcolm McLaren had asked you to uh, be in the Sex Pistols. 
and uh, and that was my was my one of my question was going to be was there any chance that you and Glenn were going to do a song together or something tonight? And you've already answered that question. I mean, yes, yes. But uh, I wanted to bring that point up when we actually were uh, one of the guys that I, you know because they called me up after Malcolm and me had decided that this was going to be my next step, you know. He, he used to say to me, oh, there's all these kids that hang in my wife's shop and we could put a band thieves in the, and things like that. And, and uh, one day they called me up you know, and, and I got to speak to Glenn. And, um, and I think Steve, Steve Jones. Yeah. And they were, Come on over, man. We're going to play together tomorrow. And supposedly I asked uh, uh, Glenn about this, and he said that was before even Johnny Rotten joined the band. Oh, really? Yeah, or they put him in the band or whatever. Oh. So I, uh, I, you know, he's kind of straightening me out, and I, I was kind of fixing his little stories because he, he thought he saw the Dolls opening up for Rod Stewart at Wembley Pool. And that might have been because, but he said, and then the next week he played at Bebas, but that's a whole one year of difference. Yeah. 70, 72 we were with Billy Mercia and and we did play with Rod Stewart at Wembley Pool. But seventy three is when we played Beavis when our first album came out. So but you know we kind of you know after three hundred years of rock and roll you kind of forget <laughs> some of the things <laughs> yeah, that know, in reality. <laughs> So um, back to New York Dolls stuff here. Um, it's been two years since you guys released Dancing Backwards in High Heels. Yes. Um, are you guys plan on releasing anything new anytime soon? You guys working I on would like to. Or? I would like to, but my... That person who makes all the decisions? Well, uh, <laughs> as we say in French, il a un problème. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, I would like to, but I don't want to deliver another David Johansson solo album. Right. And, and watch it not make anything because it's it it's again it's not that the music was bad or anything else it was just not directed to its audience that should have been receiving it you know? right and if we could have put probably if we would have called it the David Johansson group it would have probably found a, you know a bigger and a more successful uh, you know uh, uh, audience and 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 it would have been even more popular that's why I don't think there would have been as much love though man really. I mean, honestly. Well, you know, yeah, I, everybody I know that knows the dolls and loves the dolls, they love the dolls. I mean, that's just well, that's true. That's true. You know, but, but and, and when you mentioned David doing like the the Buster Pointers thing, doing his solo stuff, they're like, yeah, it's David solo and it's cool, but it's not the New York Dolls. And well, you have you have it's it's the same way. It's it, when we were talking about the Motley Crue and Poison thing. And by the way, Poison guys, I know them for years. Every time they they, they came down to, to Atlanta where I live, and uh, you know they invite me. They'd be playing these nice little stadiums or whatever, and they'd invite Sylvain up on stage. And guess what song they'd make me do? What? Uh, I love rock and roll by no, excuse me, uh, no, uh, is it the, the Kiss one? You know the rock and roll. Uh, oh yeah, rock, rock and roll, roll all night, night party, party every party day. All day, party every day. Yeah, yeah. Those bastards. I'm gonna kick their butts now that I'm thinking about it. You know, I know. I know. <laughs> no, you, no, you, you and I talked cool. about Kiss last time and uh, how, how you felt about them, and I'm with you on it. They were never part of the revolution. They were They're gimmick good. band from the beginning, and I, I'll never forget you talking about that, man. Because you know, well, you, you know, you know what I think though. It's it's really what they miss out on. And never really delivered is the blues, you know. Like, right. I, I think. I mean, it, this is my bag, and it, and it might be just my own, you know. But you, you gotta have the blues in there, man. You gotta have those three chord progressions. Yeah, rock. Yeah, like real rock. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, they just. Uh, yeah, I mean, they made a fortune, and they made great success. And, and 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 they're really cool, you know. It's not. I don't have a problem with their show, you know. And all right. that stuff. The only thing it's is, it's an mean, interesting experience, but you can't count them as something that was. Um, how do you put it? It was going to shape rock. It was not anything on. Uh, uh, I don't know what I'm, what I'm trying to well, say. Well, you know what? The way I put it, actually, and what you just mentioned before, you know, they had really nothing to do with this revolution anyway. That's true. Yeah. And. Uh, the New York Dolls, I mean, fuck, they were like, you know, ground zero for punk music, yeah. if you want to call it that. 
I don't care what you want to proto punk. I think I've heard it referred to now. You got, they were called the Dallas proto punk. <laughs> Whoa. The, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the the primordial ooze that the Cretans that were punk crawled out of. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> you know, so. But that's cool. Someone's got it. Someone's got to do it. You yeah. know, someone's got to be there. And it, I mean, you guys influenced just as many people as the Beatles or as, as Elvis or anybody else, you know. And I feel the same way about the Pistols, too. I mean, those that's some of the most powerful inspiration to more people than anybody you could possibly imagine. Very true. Very and, true. I mean, you know what I heard not too long ago, I read someplace where uh, Bono from U2 had, was influenced by the Ramones. And, and if it wasn't for the Ramones, I mean, seeing the New York Dolls, they would have never had the Ramones. So there's also that other you know, kind of wave that even the ones that we influenced at first and, and, and finally had their hearer, you know, hearing the, 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 like whatever shocked and, and inspired. And then so they said, okay, man, I, you know, I, I know I don't have a chance in the world, but now maybe I do. Right. You know, and they came out. And then, and then I swear to God, uh, I, I read this someplace where Bono says, some of his influences was the Ramones when he kind of came around, you know. So then he should kick himself in the ass and just admit where his real, where his real influence comes from. <laughs> Where's that, Lou Reed? No, no. Okay. <laughs> now uh, I got uh, like two more questions here for the night. You do what you got to do, man. Uh, you guys did a short tour of Australia last year and some dates with Alice Cooper. Yeah. Uh, you guys gonna be doing any touring this year as the Dolls? We still don't have any. We don't have anything scheduled. I'm sorry right. about that. And That's cool. I, I mean, I wish. You know, I, I think the my um, the biggest disappointing thing is for the you know the, the, the fans themselves of all ages. And, you know, that would love to see and, and say somewhere in their lives. I saw the New York Dolls too. No matter how many. You know, original dolls were on that stage. You know, Great. but I cannot make any promises, and, and it's really, um, it's 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 up to the, uh, to the to the old man, as I like to call him, affection. <laughs> okay. And boys, you're getting old every second. No, 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 no. <laughs> He's a grumpy guy sometimes, and I don't know. It's just, you know, it's it's. Uh, I I mean, I can understand. You know, you want to do your own thing because it's, you know, that that's cool. Right. We only were getting two, three gigs a year anyway, so, you know, and, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, I cannot promise anything, but I wish I could. Keep our fingers crossed. I wish I could, man, because it, it, it would be, like, you know, really cool. Spam their Facebook page and tell them the tour. <laughs> no, don't, because I'm the only one who manages that now. And oh, they all, okay. they all blame me. To, so all right, don't do that, then. By the way, I want to tell you guys out uh, something, and and I have a new radio show. Oh, all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, on uh, eastvillageradio.com. Uh, you can download, it's a free app, you know, you can get it on your, in your car or when you go to the gym or whatever, yeah. you know, as you're shoplifting in your favorite shop. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> And it's, uh, my, my show is called Rock and Roll Hours, by the way. Sylvain Sylvain's Rock and Roll Hours. Okay. And we just premiered it about a week or two ago. And now it's on rotation. And also it's, it's uh, at, towards the end of, of, of uh, the spring, mid-spring, it's going to be on uh, every week for two hours, uh, uh, Rock and Roll Hours. So there you go. And uh, What is it again? Tell them one more time. It's, it's East Village Radio. Dot com. EastVillageRadio.com. Go there and get the app. Get the Listen app. To Sylvain, Sylvain. Yep. Check Rock out the Roll check Roll out the premiere. Uh, you're gonna love it, man, because it's it's a it's all my influences. A lot of so many people came back and said, "Wow, these are the you know my 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 influences influences," nice. as they put it, and and uh, it's really cool. I I do stuff that's really you know nobody else. I mean, in in your typical like whatever when you 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 very obscure stations do play some great stuff I have to admit I'm a big AM AM fan unfortunately around here everything on AM is all Rush Limbaugh and no but there's some you see there's some craziness, you, gotta, yeah. you gotta find some of those 
that are more like a local thing and they're playing the oldies. And sometimes, like, you know, they'll pick. Well, down south, man, some we of those have, stations have, are incredible. We have a show like that here. It's called uh, the Wax Museum with Ronnie Dark. Wow, there you go. And, uh, he plays Ronnie, on. play Sylvain. Yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie you heard him. You heard him. Your butt. I sponsor the show, man. I, I, he wants to play it. That's what I, that's, that's, that's for my sponsorship. Play it, some Sylvain. There you go. There you go. But he all he plays all vinyl stuff and right. a lot of classic stuff. It's an amazing show every Sunday night for three hours. And, right. and that's about the only thing around here that's like that, playing a lot of older stuff and older bluesy stuff and rock stuff and I go he's got a really the, good following. So. Oh, that's beautiful, man. I, I go from the who to like Louis Armstrong with Billy Holiday, you oh, know. Yeah. Uh, uh, my sweet hunk of trash. One of their songs, which is it's not like the biggest hit, but so what? It is a big hit, you know. Right. And it's just cool just to uh, I tell a story every week, and uh, and it carries on to the stage actually. Uh, uh, so I tell a story about the New York Dolls and, and all that stuff. And I do have an, a single that's out by the way, a brand new single. Okay. And it's called Leaving New York. And you can get that. It's it's I made a video for it. It's free on YouTube. So Sylvain Sylvain Leaving New York. YouTube, can you again. download it on iTunes and stuff? And you can buy it at, at your favorite, I, you know, iTunes, Amazon, Schmuckason, Flipason, <laughs> Flip turn, us off. turn us off, <laughs> or run. <laughs> right away. Recharge my batteries. But no, it's it's really cool because it's uh, it's it's about a guy that you know, and his girl, she's like she's leaving New York, and you know and. And he says, I, I could hear the doggy bark because we'll always have Central Park and, and that kind of stuff. And, and it's cool. You, you, you dig it, man. I think you will. So go find that. Download it. Check it out. And uh, now my last question before we wrap up here. Um, yes, sir. Uh, if you could give one piece of advice to new musicians, what would it be? Learn to play the blues. Learn the three chord progressions. Learn what the Chuck Berry, you know, invented and... Uh, and you know Keith Richards, God, that he that he used some of that stuff. But uh, the blues, Eddie Cochran, listen to Eddie Cochran records. Um, he wrote Summertime Blues. He he would take like his like a regular Gretsch, you know, hollow body, oh, yeah. and put Gibson P90s in there. You know, hot rod your your instrument, make it your own, come up with a sound, you know. You know, and, and, and mess with it, man. Don't just be pragmatic to what you got. You know what I mean? If you got a cigar box, turn that into a guitar. But learn the blues, play the blues, somewhere down there. Because every, every music, no matter where you want to go, uh, it, it is based on the blues. Or else I'll be telling you the same thing that I said to Kiss. You got no blues. <laughs> So just leave me alone. No, no, I'm just kidding. All right, man. Words from a man who knows. He's been in the game a long time. Pay attention. So thanks for talking with us today. Thank Appreciate you, a lot. man. So going to sign a couple of things, and uh, you guys can win them. So uh, check out the website to find out how. All right? Peace. Stick around for you guys watching now. We'll be a little live Sylvain Sylvain coming up. So we go down the road, and there's Bo Dilly. He's on stage. He's going... <laughs> Have you heard? Nobody got a mockingbird. So, man, we're like totally tits on this guy, you know? <laughs> doing this. Tits, remember that word? <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been home all winter, so I got tits right now. <laughs> but, anyways. <laughs> So, uh, of course, we used to do the song Pills, you know, so we're all like like over here basically and, and we we're watching Bo on the stage and we all like, we started yelling, you know, because we want to hear the song that we perform, which is called Pills. So we're going, Pills, 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 in the middle of his like. <laughs> Anyways, he gets so fucking pissed off, man, he calls the security guys and he has us thrown out of the place for selling <laughs> drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make this shit up? <laughs> so there you go. And on that last note, we're gonna do pills right now. Woo! I said it to my head, to my head. Rock and roll nurse come to 
my head, she gives me to my head as I was lying in the hospital a little bit. Everybody, to my head, to my head. Rock and roll nurse come to my head. Come on, the two girls. <laughs> and the guys, come on, guys. As I was lying in the hospital bed, the rock and roll nurse come to my head. She said, uh, pull out your tongue, baby, and stick out your head. I got these pills, I'm gonna give you some. She said, uh, pull out your Doctor, doctor, run here and see. I don't need the job that the nurse is giving me. She said, I pull out your tongue, baby. Stick out your arms. I got these pills, I'm gonna give you some. She said, take my I don't think the job that the doctor's given me He's got me good to break my heart He's got me taking junk against my will She said I My fucking dreams. <laughs> As I was lying in the 